Hello, my name is Shane Johnson, and I'm a technical marketing manager with Red Hat. By now, you've heard the JBoss Enterprise application platform is fast. It's lightweight. But what does that really mean, and how is it done? I'm going to go over two of the core components of the application server, the startup process, and the application deployment process to help show this. The two primary components are JBoss modules, which is a modular class loading environment, and JBoss module services container. All of the Java EE services that you would think of, such as JPA or JMS or JAXRS, those are provided to the application server in the form of extensions, and those extensions are deployed as services. So when the application server first starts up, it creates a modular class loading environment. The second step is it's going to load the server module. That server module will then create a services container. The first service that it's going to create is a server service. That server service is then going to parse the configuration file. At the top of that configuration file is a series of extensions that have been configured. Each of those extensions is loaded in the form of a module. So as it reads those extensions, it goes out and it'll load a module for CDI. It might load the module for JPA and modules for JAXS or any other extensions that you might need. At that point, it's going to read the subsystem configuration. So each of those extensions has subsystems. It reads those subsystems, and depending on what's configured in those subsystems, it might start one or more services. For example, when the application server first starts up, it starts the caching service. So at this point, if the application server has been started in the web profile mode, 121 out of 175 services will be started. The remaining services will be passive or on demand. On the other hand, if we started the application server with a full profile configuration, 143 out of 205 services have been started. The remaining are passive or on demand. The next part is to actually deploy an application. When that happens, the server service creates a deployment service. That deployment service will do two things. The first thing it does is it wraps the application in a module. Then it inspects that application to decide what modules are necessary. For example, if your application has a Beans configuration, it's going to make sure that it can see the CDI API. If that application has a RESTful annotations within it, it's going to make sure that it can see the JAXRS API. The next thing it's going to do is it's going to start any services that are necessary to satisfy the requirements for that application. If it needed CDI, it's going to go ahead and start the weld service. If it needed JPA and it inspected the configuration file, it might start a persistence unit service. For more information on the internal architecture of JBoss EAP, how it starts up, or how applications are deployed, please feel free to take a look at howtojboss.com.